I created the following multimedia video cast from a video recording of a class lecture of Professor Dr. Ellen R. Clark as final project for the class of IST 6353 Multimedia Production. I followed the principles of multimedia learning based on social cues, personalization, voice, and image principles. According to these principles, the use of a conversational style in a multimedia product increases learning. The voice utilized was of a standard accented human, and it is spoken by an avatar interacting in a virtual environment, since learning does not necessarily increase when the speaker's image on the screen. For the technical aspect of the production, I captured the screenshots from Second Life with Camtasia Studio 6. Audio from original videos was edited with Replay Converter and Audacity software. Opening and closing credits created in Adobe Photoshop, while Camtasia was the video editing software. Use of stock images and music files follow the guidelines of Creative Commons licensing. Final output is an MP4 format for iPods or similar portable digital devices. Another example of new technologies is my voice over introduction, digitized in a text-to-speech application of prompt professional translation software. I hope you enjoy this educational multimedia production and please feel free of sharing your opinions and suggestions. in the Division of Bicultural Bilingual Studies at the University of Texas at San Antonio. I'm in teacher training and I work with uh, beginning teachers and with master teachers and uh, I think most of the, my area of research deals with teacher identity from the personal identity and from a teacher identity. And why are those two elements important? Well they're important because our goal is to become culturally responsive teachers, teachers who can respond, respond to the culture of their classrooms. So we have to investigate what that culture of the classroom is. But before we can talk about what the culture of our classroom, we have to understand what is our own culture. So I think that for you who are beginning teachers or teachers who are in, uh, in continual development, it's that exploration that we never get a chance to do to really look at self. Because once you do that, then you're better able to look at who's in your classroom and to be able to identify those factors, those characteristics that are important. And also to approach it from a, the resource point of who is, what is the richness that's contained in your classroom, in that school community, and in the community surrounding the school. But before you can recognize those elements, like I said earlier, you've really got to look at yourself. So you've got to explore, who am I? To be a culturally competent teacher, which I think it's what we, who are future teachers, our, our teachers in the classroom, are all going to be striving for. So to be culturally competent means that we as teachers are com continually assessing self. And so to, why do we want to assess self? Well, because we want to be culturally responsive to the children in our classroom. So in order to understand who our students are and how can we best teach them, what we want to do is to be able to look at ourselves, to look within and to be able to say, this is who I am. This is who to see how do we differ or how are we the same with our students in our classrooms. Now, some of us might share the, the majority culture of that classroom that we're going to be working in or that we work in, but some of us don't, might not share that majority culture that the classroom has. So how best do we do this? It's 
embarking on the continual self-assessment of self in order to be read to, in order to, as an ethnic person. And everyone, everyone is ethnic. Ethics just means you're part of a group. So to be an ethnic person means you share something with a particular group. So it could be your religion, it could be your nationality, it could be your past heritage, it could be that you come from another country and now you are in the United States. But let's take me for an example, okay? I'm Ellen Johannes Clark. I was born in South Texas. That's my region where I come from, so that's helped to shape me. I'm Ellen Johannes Clark. I'm a certain age. I'll tell you how old I am. But it means that I have now joined the senior citizen group. So that's another culture. I'm Ellen Johannes Clark. I am a Methodist. That's another cultural group. I am also the, um, the second born in my family. So that also says culturally who I am. And I'm also a female, an, another cultural a being. So all of those backgrounds combined with who you are ethnically, which in my case is my national identity is a Mexican-American, all come together to form myself as a person. And the better I am, I, the better I can articulate all of those cultural components, all of those cultural components, if I can talk about them without any hesitancy, means I understand myself. So if I understand myself as a female, it means I can identify with young females in the classroom regardless of my age. I can identify with the mothers of my students in the classroom. So, as future teachers, as culturally responsive teachers, as culturally comp competent teachers, what I want you to do is to look at these core principles. And those are the core principles that you yourself contain, that your books that you've studied contain, that the people you work with contain, and that the community you're working with contains. And that is, you want to understand what are the values that that community has, what are the values that I was taught formally in school and informally at home, and what are those values I am teaching formally and informally, and what are those values of the community being taught formally and informally. What are the belief systems? What is it that I believe? What is it that my teacher training books showed. What is a Dewey belief? What are those beliefs that form the theoretical frameworks for everything we learn? What are the beliefs that my community has? What are the beliefs that they have learned formally and informally? And the other is, what are aesthetic standards? What are those of the community and those of the school? You know, some aesthetic, but then you've got to look at what the community is. Is that value to ask questions in a Latino community, in an Asian community, in a Native American community? Actually, in the majority of the communities of the world, questioning of those teachers is not, is not something we value because your teacher is seen as someone you respect. Therefore, you don't question as much. So we have to understand what those differences are in terms of standards. The other is that of what are linguistic expressions. What is the language of the community? What is the language of the school? What is your language? So and how do people express themselves linguistically? So social, culturally, as well in terms of heritage languages. The other is what are patterns of thinking? How do, and that kind of tied in when I was talking about aesthetic standards. What are the patterns of thinking of that community? What are those that you were brought up in? What are those that you were taught? And then, how do we communicate? So styles of communication. All of these things you're going to be learning as you, as you continue in your teacher development, in your beginning to be able to articulate your efficacy standards as, as a good teacher, as a culturally competent teacher, 
and is a culturally responsive teacher. 